This is the all new Lamborghini Huracan replacement. It's the most powerful baby Lambo of all time and it shares loads of bits with the brand new Rualto hypercar. Lamborghini is going all out to make sure it'll outgun rivals from Ferrari and McLaren. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. Lamborghinis have always looked mental. And I don't just mean flagship supercars like the Diablo, Murcielago and Aventador. Even baby Lambos have been getting crazier and crazier with each generation. This is what the very first Gallardo looked like when it came out back in 2003. And this is one of the very last Squadra Corsa versions. They were basically GT3 cars with number plates bolted on. But that car's replacement, the Hurricane, got even more wild. The Performante versions looked epic, but the STO was on another level. And the off-road Storato? Well, that's just insane, isn't it? So how is Lamborghini gonna top all that? Well, this is the brand new baby Lambo that'll replace the Hurricane. You'll immediately recognize it as a Lamborghini, thanks to that iconic wedge shape. And there are plenty of bits inspired by the Hurricane and Gallardo, as well as the brand new Rualto flagship but the front end is very different from any recent Lambo. Sure, it's still covered in massive intakes and loads of angular creases, but the headlights are very thin, almost like those on a Ferrari SF90. The hexagonal daytime running lights inside the grill are also really unusual. They remind me of giant rally fog lamps, and they really help make the new Lambo stand out. I've never seen anything like these, on a supercar before. It looks pretty similar to the old Hurricane from the side, but the tall air intake on the door reminds me of the Gallardo. But my favorite angle of this new car is round the back, which was definitely inspired by the new Rualto. There's a massive central exhaust in the same place as the Rualto's dual tips, and the thin brake lights and giant rear diffuser are very similar to that car's too, and so is the double bubble roof and the partially exposed engine. In fact, Lamborghini's plans for this engine might come as a shock to die-hard fans, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And speaking of die-hard fans, what does a famous Lamborghini fanboy think of this new car? So, what do I think of the new Lamborghini Huracan? Well, you guys know I'm an Aventador fan, and the doors don't go up. I like the light, because that is very Lambo. I think the rear heavily looks like a McLaren. It's okay. I've not really been a Huracan fan ever. So I'll stick with my Revuelto, but I'm sure it will do very well like all Lambos do. So I repeat, Lambo all day, every day. But do you like this new baby Lamborghini or do you prefer the Ferrari 296 GTB? Let me know in your comments which is your favourite. To be clear, Lamborghini hasn't officially revealed the Hurricane successor yet. These images were put together by CarWow's in-house team of experts. They created this design by scouring through photos of Lamborghini prototypes to give you the best idea yet what this new car will look like. This team also predicted the design of the new Rualto, and they absolutely nailed it. Look, this is our prediction, and this is what the car actually turned out to look like. But even if you love the way the new Hurricane replacement looks, there's one thing about it that's very controversial. Lamborghini might be about to kill off the iconic naturally aspirated V10, the engine that's been in the Huracan and Gallardo since 2003. The chief technical officer for Lamborghini confirmed that this new car's engine will have less than 12 but more than 6 cylinders. To be fair, a V10 would fall into this category, but it's unlikely they're going to use the old engine because of emissions. And in today's era of constantly downsizing and using smaller capacity engines with turbochargers for reduced emissions, it's more than likely the 5.2 litre natural aspirated V10 will be swapped out for a twin turbo V8. Now, does this mean it will get the same engine as an Urus SUV? No, that car's 4-litre twin-turbo V8 has a cross-plane crank, which means it delivers more low-down torque and a bit less top-end power, more like a classic muscle car. Lots of V8 sports cars and almost every V8 supercar uses a flat plane crank. These engines produce more power at higher RPM and they rev more quickly. Plus, if done right, they sound amazing. If done wrong, they can sound a bit dull. I'm talking about you, AMG. Yeah, Black Series. Anyway, to give an idea of the difference between a cross-plane crank 
and a flat plane crank in a similar engine, here's a comparison between a V8 in a Corvette C8, which uses a cross plane crank, and the V8 in the Z06, which uses a flat plane crank. It makes the American car sound more like a Ferrari than a Corvette. Anyway, back to Lamborghini. Where is Lamborghini going to find a new V8 engine from? Well, one option will be to chop four cylinders off the end of the 6.5 litre V12 in the Rualto, and then add a couple of turbos. This will give you a 4.3 litre V8 with mountains of power. But Lamborghini has already spent lots of time and loads of money developing a brand new V8 engine for its new hybrid Le Mans hypercar, the SC63. This engine is a 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 that produces 680 horsepower with the help of an electric motor. Okay, so this engine has been specifically designed for the racing program, but it wouldn't be impossible to use a similar engine architecture in a future road car. And Lamborghini could tune it to make even more power because the racing car is restricted to 680 horsepower due to rules. And that includes the hybrid system too. Now these rules don't apply to road cars, so Lamborghini could easily tune this engine to make much more power than in the old Huracan Performante, STO or Technica models. They all had 640 horsepower from their 5.2 litre Natchez aspirated V10s, and they were all seriously quick. <laughs> pretty good to me. Sure, Lamborghini will have to make a few other changes if it wants to use a race car derived V8 in the next generation Huracan. For example, the engine in the SC63 has a cold V design. This means the turbos are mounted outside the cylinder banks for better cooling and it also makes them easier to maintain. But most modern V8 road cars use a hot V setup instead. This is where the turbos are mounted between the cylinder banks in the middle of the engine. This may not be so good for heat, but it helps the turbo spool up quicker, and it means the catalytic converters can work more effectively to reduce emissions. Okay, so Lamborghini owners probably don't care very much about emissions. But this guy certainly does. His name is Stefan Winkelmann, and he's the CEO at Lamborghini. He has to care about emissions because it's his job to make sure Lamborghini can survive during the global shift from petrol to electric power. He already confirmed the first Lamborghini electric car will arrive in 2028, and it'll be based on the 1,360 horsepower Lanzador concept. Stefan also said that the new Hurricane successor will definitely be a plug-in hybrid. But don't start sharpening your pitchforks yet, because it'll be a performance-focused hybrid system. That means it's all about power. How much extra power are we talking? Well, the Rualto uses its V12 engine and three electric motors to produce 1,015 horsepower. There's one electric motor at the back to help drive the rear wheels, and there are two motors on the front axle that replace the Aventador's traditional four-wheel drive system. It's actually a very similar setup to the Ferrari SF90, which also has four-wheel drive and a tri-motor hybrid system with about a thousand horsepower. Lamborghini hasn't confirmed whether it will give the Hurricane replacement three electric motors. But Stefan Winkelmann did say Lamborghini's new plug-in hybrid engines will all come with a dual-clutch gearbox. This is important because the Rualto's dual-clutch gearbox has been specifically designed around a 150 horsepower electric motor. And there's a strong chance Lamborghini will reuse this for the next generation Huracan. Combine this motor with a twin-turbo V8 producing more than 640 horsepower, and you've got an 800 horsepower hybrid supercar. That's more powerful than any version of the old Aventador. Okay, so it probably won't sound as good as the naturally aspirated V10 in the old Huracan, but it should sound much better than the 3 litre twin turbo V6s you get in a 680 horsepower McLaren Artura and 830 horsepower Ferrari 296 GTB. Though to be fair, the Ferrari engine does sound kind of good. Have a listen to it. Anyhow, you can bet Lamborghini has been directly comparing its new prototype with these cars. Luckily, I've also tested this Ferrari and McLaren, and here's what happened when I timed them from 0 to 60 miles an hour over the standing quarter mile. 
three seconds dead to 60. Quarter mile, what's he gonna do? 10.31 on the quarter mile. Not 60, 3.01. <laughs> I'd say that was on the money. Quarter mile, 10.5 seconds. Those times are incredible incredibly close. And it shows how crucial it is to manage traction with a hybrid performance car, especially if you only have rear-wheel drive. Lamborghini hasn't confirmed whether the new Huracan successor will have two or four-wheel drive, but there is a strong chance it could go back to being rear-wheel drive only. This would make the car lighter to offset the weight of a hybrid battery. And it would also make sure this new baby Lamborghini doesn't tread on the Rualto's toes. There's also some evidence that Lamborghini might prefer rear-wheel drive for its smaller supercar. Just take a look at the Huracan Technica. This was one of the last versions of the Huracan you could buy, and it was supposed to be a sort of greatest hits of all the Huracans before it. Essentially, it combined all the best bits from all the previous versions of the Huracan into one flashy send-off. Interestingly, it was only available with rear-wheel drive. In fact, if you want to watch my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen now. Or follow the link in the description of this video below. Now, I reckon Lamborghini will play it relatively safe with a new Huracan replacement, at first at least. It could start with a single motor hybrid with around 800 horsepower, and it could save a crazy four-wheel drive version with even more power for a bit later on, probably after a faster version of the Rualto has been revealed, like an S or an SV or an SVJ. Sticking to rear-wheel drive will also keep the price down. When I say down, I mean down to the level of a Ferrari 296 GTB. And that car will set you back more than £240,000. That's about £30,000 more than the old Huracan Performante cost. But that's just the way it goes these days. A base model of the new Rualto costs £450,000. That's over £100,000 more than the super limited edition Aventador Ultima. So don't expect to get much change from a quarter of a million pounds for this new baby Lamborghini when it arrives next year. In fact, Lamborghini has confirmed it will reveal the new car in late 2024, just after it shows off a new plug-in hybrid version of the Urus. So to make sure you don't miss out on any of those updates as soon as the news drops, subscribe to this channel right now and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on because you can rest assured we'll be informing you as soon as that information lands. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, I've picked a couple out for you there. I think you'll like it. Just click on those windows to watch them. Or if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by hitting the Carwell logo there. Simple.